this MMA, SaaS, AIAA, whatever that new one is called. If you're an agency and you want to see how I use webinars to get 53 paid customers, tune in because in this video, I'm going to walk you through the framework and I'm going to give you the actual slides. I'm talking about slide by slide of the exact webinar that I use to get the results that I'm talking about. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell because this channel is all about using automation, artificial intelligence to grow your local lead generation agency. Enjoy. All right, what's up everybody? Uh, welcome to today's training. So for a long time, I have been talking about uh, webinars and I have been talking about how I use webinars to get customers. And when we first rolled out this model, um, I actually used a webinar to get 53 customers uh, in a single webinar. And it just so happens that I think one of them might be on this webinar. I think, Misty, you might have come from the first webinar. I can't remember. It's been a bit ago. But anyway, um, I have shared that success and that story and the offer that we did to uh, in that webinar, but I've never actually given the slides away. But until now, I haven't really um, shared all the slides. And I thought, listen, I'll teach how to do webinars. I'll give my slides away for free with the express goal that you guys can go out and start using this properly to grow your agencies. So let's go ahead and get into today. So um, now notice I'm calling these agency webinars. A lot of times when we talk about webinars, people, you know, for example, Russell Brunson will do a webinar promoting a 997 thing. And that's kind of um, his model. We are doing something different when we promote a webinar for an agency. Okay. The webinar for the agency is not to make the sale is to do the demo. And I'll walk you through that in this whole thing, but just understand that there is nuance when you're doing a webinar for your agency. Um, we're going to talk about how it works. We're going to talk about um, maybe the most, uh, listen, for me, I'm kind of a knucklehead, so I got to break things down. Uh, we're going to go through the persuasion checklist, and then we're going to talk about whether or not you should do a webinar. All right. The goal of an agency webinar. Now, a lot of people think that the goal of the webinar is to do the webinar. Bam, you make a ton of sales. But the reality is, if you treat a webinar properly, what you're doing, if we think of an of analogy in golf, what you're really doing is if before the webinar, if you're on the outside of the green, what you're doing is you're chipping it really close to the hole. So you can just go in there and put it in. Or in other words, if you're not making sales, actual revenue sales on a webinar, that's okay. That really isn't the goal of a webinar because we are selling services. We're not selling a product. We're selling continuity. So at the end of the day, the idea of a webinar is to fill the top of the funnel. Okay. So if we look at a sales funnel, a regular sales funnel, what we want to do is we want to think about it as how many qualified people can we get on calls, whether that's demo calls, regular calls, and you'll find out that those calls are so value productive that doing consistent webinars is an incredible way to get sales in any business. But especially if you're doing anything where the person is going to pay you over and over um, for services. Okay. The big thing is uh, you get paid today for what you did a month or two months ago. All right. So we want to make sure that when we're doing this, we are really focusing on maintaining and keeping that, that funnel nice and full. All right. So, and provide, of, of course, when we do a webinar, this is a big thing. When we do a webinar that we abide by these three core principles. Number one is we have a unique prospect in mind. Okay. Uh, it is possible to do a webinar if you don't have a very unique person with a very unique problem. Okay, because you can't make a unique promise, which is the second thing. And then in terms of results and outcomes, you really want to make sure that you provide proof. You're going to make claims during your webinar. You're going to tell stories and people are instantly going to not believe you. All right. So these are some core things. Now, now again, Russell Brunson really pioneered uh, in our space 
what a webinar looks like. And he perfected it over time by adding different things, you know, value stack, uh, different types of closes, different things, you know, that uh, really made this thing, this whole thing work. And this was my first uh, introduction to webinars is what I got was the perfect webinar. I actually bought this and went through his video and started building my own. But then I was lucky enough to make friends with uh, Dr. Chad Wallner, and he really showed me how to um, do that, which I hope I can simplify and do with you today. Because when I got the, the perfect webinar, even though it's simple, and hopefully what I'm going to share with you today will, will be simple, but sometimes I just feel like I'm not that bright. I'm like, okay, explain this to me like I'm five. Love the office. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to try and break down the core parts of a webinar into building blocks, all right? And it's incredibly simple. If I look at what Russell Brunson brought, he talked about the big domino. For me, that's like an attorney getting up in trial and just opening statements. That is just what they're doing to set the stage and the tone for the rest of the case. And then the content section Really, the content section is so overthought. The content section is storytelling. Now, it doesn't mean that you just sit here and like tell stories and whatever. There's different types of stories, which we're going to go through. But this is really, at the end of the day, when you're talking about um, this, the, the secrets or discoveries, this is storytelling. And then the value stack, this part right here, again, it's incredibly important. That's number one. But it's overcomplicated. For me, this is just about plugging holes in the leaky bucket. Because at the end of the day, when you're doing a webinar, you're identifying a problem, you're making a promise, okay? You're telling stories, you're telling people how you discovered the solution to that problem. And then you're providing the solution that you discovered, okay? And that should match and plug all the leaky holes in the bucket. All right, we're just going to do a quick check on audio, make sure we're good. You guys, everything good so far? I think we're all good. I'm not getting any complaints of being dumb here, which, you know, all right, we're all good. Or in other words, what a webinar is, it's a story about them. And it provides a new happy ending. So if you learn nothing else today, just remember that at the end of the day, you're going to step, you're going to tell a story that arcs from their current state into a new state. That's what we're doing. All right. We don't need to get too complicated. All right. So I'm going to start at the very beginning. And I, I said, um, you know, that big domino part of the webinar is really all about making your case. And that is what we're doing. If you think about an attorney, what they're really trying to do when they get up in front of a jury and they're saying, my side of the story is this. What they're going to do is they're going to lay down all of their proof. They're going to future pace you for what's coming. Like, hey, you'll see that this is abnormal and you're a, you're a normal person. So you won't mind it when I show you, you know, how this is really supposed to work. And so they're really doing a couple of things at the beginning of this where they're hooking the audience's attention. A big thing. So you'll see at the beginning of my webinar it was getting three big outcomes, like getting qualified patients for this, that, and the other, and they're able to pay, right? That's a bold promise. And I qualify them. So here's the other thing. You want to make sure that the person on that webinar is the right person. And so you're going to deconstruct the situations that they live with in their business. So in my case, we're talking about doctors who are tired of chasing people, doctors who are tired of, you know, paying for leads and, and it going nowhere. So we're going to deconstruct and talk about those things because that then helps. If we can, if we can describe the scenarios that they live, that they live through and we can do that better than they can, we win. Okay. Uh, and then qualify them and then hook them to the end. We do want to give people a reason to stay to the end of that webinar. Why? If they've heard things like this before, or if they think they've heard things like that before, we want, we're not going to have a chance to pitch them if they don't make it to the end. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll do like a lead magnet or a gift or a giveaway or something like that um, to, to, to entice them to stay the, till the end, which leads me to 
a quick little hook to the end. You guys, if you stay to the end of today, I have a really interesting offer for you. It's not something you're going to have to buy, but it's something probably that is unexpected. And I think if you want to do webinars, it will be one of the coolest things you've ever seen. It has to do with something that's happened in the last two weeks. So stick around because you definitely want to, you know, wait around for more. All right. So again, this is your opening statements as if you were in trial. The first impression about your promise, the first impression that validates whether your solution is for them or not. And it's the first impression that tells them why they should care. All right. That is the first 10 to 15 minutes about your webinar. Now, there, there's things in there where we want to establish our credibility, where we want to do different things. Uh, there will be a checklist later where we can go through that. And when you get my slides, you can say, oh, yeah, we, we have some stuff that we need to do here. Give my credentials, yada, yada, yada. All right. Here we go. Identify and replace. So in your current business, the businesses, whether it's roofers, real estate agents, any local business you're serving, they all have, they all hold in their mind ideas about what you do. They already do. What When you walk in the door and you say, we do lead generation for roofers, they're like, oh, I know what that is. They've already put you into a bucket, okay? What your job here in this part of the content portion of the webinar, what your job is to do, you are to uh, attract or to find rather the three core fixed ideas that they have about your thing. Find them, isolate them, and then we're going to use stories to fix them, right? Now, um, why three? This is a question I've gotten before. Why not four? Why not five? I've actually heard of people doing more, but primarily speaking, I have found that one, doing more than three is uh, too much for people to hold on to. Generally, that's enough to get them over the story arc and see the value that you can do. So three is enough. Okay. In my webinar, the stories that I'm using, whoop, the stories that I'm using are a case study, a testimonial, and then a demonstration. Okay. Now a demonstration is actually one of the greatest forms of proof. It's a really good story. They see visually with their eyes, something happening. If I say I can do this thing and then I show them, that's a big deal. All right. So we're going to go ahead and um, let's see here. I actually want to go into these really fast only because in the actual uh, module in Lead Gen U, I will walk through each of these in more detail. But I think it's while we're on this workshop here, I think it makes sense to deep dive each one of these. So case studies, the testimonial, and then the demo. For my niche and for many niches, when we're talking about lead generation, the first complaint that people have is lead quality, okay? Now, we had a pub uh, published case study by Facebook, and they gave us some really interesting attribution data. And basically, they said, when you go to broad, like, services, okay, so for example, chiropractic services or real estate services or anything where you can place a price tag on it, they are not going to get as, as high a response rate simply because everybody knows what the price is already. There's no mystery or curiosity that you can really put behind it. And they're, uh, they're, they fall inside the bucket of a commodity, okay? So it's not to say you can't do lead generation to those services, but it's to say that one of the most, uh, well, basically one of the only levers you can pull is the price lever. Okay. I'll give you a discount. Well, that's a reason to incentivize me to come to your whatever business. Okay. Now in this case study, we were running marketing campaigns for a couple different niches. And what the case study showed was, yeah, you got whatever it was in terms of leads, a lot of leads, but all of the revenue came from the more specific marketing campaigns. And so what we talk about here is instead of focusing on leads or lead volume or promoting, you know, those particular, <clears throat> excuse me, those particular services, what we talk about is niching down 
narrowing down and excluding people. So in terms of quality leads, I don't focus on quality leads. I focus on qualified leads. Okay. Now there is a difference when you're doing lead generation and ads, that audience that is buying from you, they are considered cold traffic for a reason. They don't know you. They don't have any trust in you. They don't have a reason to. Okay. So the starting place is just to make sure that there's a match and that match starts by narrowing down and excluding everybody else. So in my niche, if I say non-surgical solutions to knee pain, I'm excluding everyone from that conversation unless they have knee pain. Okay. So the power of exclusion is what I'm focusing on there. Is this making sense? You guys getting this right now? Is this making sense to you? Grab the chat. Let me know. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Solid. Yeah. Cool. So that, so a case study delivered that information to me, which by the way, the secret about all, like if you're trying to replace ideas with new ideas, stories, stories, replace stories are the vehicle that will replace existing bad ideas. That's how people are going to remember. Okay. So the case study is what happened. Now, the next thing is, okay, Sam, we agree with you. Qualified leads, excluding people. That does sound better. Awesome. Check mark number one. Check mark number two is uh, the actual story of one of our customers named Ray Peavy. Now, here's what's really cool about Ray Peavy. Earlier in the webinar, I talked about this amazing result. Yeah, he doubled his practice in two and a half months. In secret number two, what I said is he doubles his practice in two and a half months but we didn't tell you what happened in the first six weeks. And the truth is the first six weeks were incredibly hard for him. All of the things that happened in these, uh, audio is jumping around a bit. You guys, let's make sure my audio is good. Is audio good for everyone other than John? Hopefully. Okay. Audio is good. Okay. John, it's yours, buddy. Audio is good. Sounds good for me. Okay. Um, so Everything that was happening, everything that people complain about, like getting leads, them not showing, people chasing them, that was all happening for Dr. PV. And this hap this happened to happen to his clinic. He was like having this this struggle during the very beginning of the pandemic in California. He'd been in practice now for 30 years. So the guy was between a rock and a hard place like never before. So one day he's walking by his uh, front desk <clears throat> and he hears her talking on the phone and he says, is that a lead from Facebook? She said, yeah. He goes, transfer that to me. So he picks up the phone. Before I tell you about the conversation, let's think about this. Most of the lead, most of the lead follow-up efforts before that had been done by staff. Staff have a defined scope of work that they do. Their job is not to be a doctor, not to ask about conditions. Their job is to pick up the phone and say, hey, it looks like you're interested in our offer. Can we get you booked for an appointment? Okay. Hold that in your head. Now, think about what Dr. Peavy said when he got on the phone. What was different? Dr. Peavy got on the phone and he defaulted to his role. What's his role? His role is to talk to them like a doctor. So he said, hey, Sally, maybe that was her name. I have no idea. Hey, Sally, sounds to me like you've been struggling with neuropathy. Tell me about that. How long have you had it? What are your symptoms? Okay. He starts talking to her like a person. What do you think happened? Do you think maybe Sally felt a little bit different psychologically about the conversation that she was going through with the doctor as opposed to the front desk and the front desk didn't do anything wrong. It's just, they didn't know that people don't trust you just by default. They can't just say, Hey, yeah, because you're calling me from a business, I should trust you. That's not how it works. But because Dr. PV showed empathy and he cared about, what was going on in that person, they showed up the next day and they turned into a sale, $4,500 of revenue within 24 hours, within 48 hours. He saw this and he said, uh, maybe there's something here. We've been struggling all this time, but I just made 4,500 bucks in 48 hours. Hey team, bring the team together. From now on, what we're going to do, you get a lead on, don't book the appointment, transfer them over to me. Boom, doubled his practice in two and a half months. 
that is the subjective. That is the nuance it takes in this game. We have to inject trust. Okay. Now I'm actually kind of like teaching you something right now, but I'm also telling you what is being taught in secret number two, because, because it is real. And that story taught me what was really happening there. And it was, it made it so I could um, get better results for everyone else. You guys, is this making sense? Have you ever seen anything like this? Have you ever tried anything like this in your own agencies? Grab the comments. Let me know. I got them pulled up. Now I can see what's going on. Is this making sense? Definitely. Just to Keith. All right, Keith makes sense. Yes. Awesome. Okay. And then the third thing. So after we've built, not tried it yet. Got to try it, Dave. All right. So after we've built this um, trust so far, so after we've said, Hey, it's not quality leads, it's qualified leads. Uh, don't chase leads, do this instead. After we've done that, then it's like, okay, well, you've brought me over the belief bridge. Now I need to know how does your solution work? Okay, I want you to step back for just a minute. If you look at these three separate stories, when you combine them all together and you look at their role in the webinar, what are they really doing? They're telling what the problem is, they're telling what the discovery of the solution is, and then they're telling the solution. So problem, discovery, solution. That is the story arc about how those three stories tie together. Those three stories replace all of their fixed ideas with new ideas, but they start with the problem that everybody knows about, how you solve the problem, like the story, how you discovered it, and then the solution on the back end. So on the back end, the third discovery that we do in this webinar is the actual demonstration about how we've taken these, the problem, the discovery, how we fixed them, and then how we automated them. And then one of the best forms of proof and storytelling is demonstration. Now, in this case, when I demonstrated how UpHex com combines with high level, I did just like a regular demo, click, 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 showed people what it, what did, but then I redid the demo with my 10 year old because I knew that, and I got complaints, not complaints, but feedback that those people are going to say, it's just easy because he's doing it. So I said, well, how could I make it that much more believable? So I grabbed my 10 year old. I literally, so I'm in my office right now. I grabbed her. I said, Hey, me, I sit down, boom, grab my phone. I said, click that button, do this, do this. And boom, that one right there is what demonstrated. That was a unique demonstration about how the solution, the tool could work for them. Okay. We got a story like that working together as well. Excited to put it together. Awesome. Makes sense. Never held a webinar, but it makes sense. Nathan. Yes. Awesome. You guys, storytelling is the greatest skill that there is in marketing. However, if you want to do it right, You'll identify what your stories are, and then you're going to have to learn a checklist. This You're going to have to learn how to make these stories really resonate with people. So what I have for you is effectively a persuasion checklist, okay? I'm going to go through this because there's a lot of things, and these are not all of them. There's more, but these are the ones that I use. These are the ones that I think work the best. All right. Persuasion, number one, kind of like. It's kind of like, so we call these kind of like bridge. Basically, these are metaphors and analogies. People have a hard time grasping onto new ideas, okay? So for example, when I, taught, when I tell people how AI works, I say, all right, Sam, finish this sentence for me. Peanut butter and, peanut butter and jelly. How'd you know to say that? Uh, because, you know, that's commonly said, that's a language model. That's what AI is doing. So that is, so it's kind of like this, so they can really uh, catch on to new ideas. Trial closes. I've been doing trial closes on this. Are you guys here? Are you guys ready? Grab the comments. Let me know. Isn't this amazing, right? You want to throw that out to the audience so they're participating, so they're there with you. So you know, I'm kind of like, you know, this is kind of meta, kind of ruining my own persuasion on this thing, which I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm just trying to share with you how it works, Okay. Future pacing. You guys, imagine how amazing it's going to be when you have a proven webinar that you can offer in your niche. You can run traffic to, you can do affiliate uh, uh, webinars with. You can do that, and then you'll fill your demo calendar 
every single month with qualified people. How cool is that? That future pacing. Imagine having your own, imagine what it would be like in your business if you had a proven marketing thing that you just could rely on, right? Hey, if all this thing did, most of the time, it's a better idea to inject reality into uh, a sales pitch than it is to overhype things, okay? So listen, Keith, up until now, we've talked about how amazing it was that Dr. Peavy got this, these amazing, he doubled his practice in two and a half months. If all this thing did was help you add another 25% in the next year, would it be worth it? Well, yeah, it'd be worth it. That's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for more. But I just want you to understand how good this opportunity is, right? So that's reality. We, we want to start injecting those in there as well. Okay, do get rid of replace. What are the things that they have that they can get rid of? Earlier, before high level, you guys, <clears throat> you have MailChimp, uh, Zapier, CallRail, uh, you know, all these different things that you Frankenstein together of which you pay different subscriptions for all of that stuff. What can this thing do? What can help you get rid of and what can help you replace, right? That is using logic throughout your stories, throughout your pitch to get, um, to get people to buy. You're like, Hey, we're, we're going to save all this money. Two choices. All right. There's always people when they see the value that you're giving in your webinar, they're always like, okay, if this is so good, why are you giving it to me for free? You have to answer that question. The question why must be addressed and answered over and over and over again during a webinar. So after we do um, the content, we'll get into the, the, the stack here in just a second. We have a slide and you'll see it when you get my slides where it says, listen, we had two choices when we were pricing out this offer for you guys. One is we would focus on the most qualified, the rich, the, you know, the people who really have the money, just focus on them and help them get those results. And that's how we would price it. Or two, we would make it feasible for everyone. We've been doing this a long time and we want to help as many pe people as possible. So that's why, okay, you give yourself uh, the options. Okay. Tell what, tell, tell what. All right. Clayton Makepeace one of the uh, amazing copywriters of the last 50 years said, tell people what you're going to tell them, tell them, then tell them what you told them. Okay. And so you're going to find yourself because people can't retain information. You're going to find yourself going through your webinar and going through my webinar. And you're going to see me tell a story, show proof, and then tell them what I told them, and then tell them again. Okay. It's not enough. It's not enough to just tell them and think that they're going to retain the information. You have to simplify it. You got to retell them and summarize over and over and over. Okay. Here's another thing. Uh, this, you, you, it's always like, okay, when do I show my proof? There's not really a wrong time to show your proof. However, after you make a claim, you got to prove it. Okay. So for example, I make a claim of, we get this, this lead volume, blah, blah, blah. I got to show a screenshot. Okay. Or this doctor got this result. I got to show a testimonial right, right after. And so if you're going to make a claim or if you're going to make a promise, you got to back it up immediately because the, the thing they're going to do right out of the gate is they're going to not believe you. And by the way, if you make a claim and you don't back it up and then you do that again, and then you do that again, they're going to think you're a big liar because you never showed any proof. Okay. So claim then proof urgency, you know, urgency and scarcity. These ones everybody knows about, right? All right. Now you're going to take those, that checklist and you're going to go back after you figure out the core parts of your, um, of your content, the, the problem discovery solution. And you're going to go back and you're going to sprinkle those tactics on top of the content. You're going to strengthen your claims. You're going to simplify your information. You're going to make sure that you add impact where it needs and that you layer in uh, persuasion where you need to drive things further home. Okay. So use that checklist. Don't start with the checklist. Like literally say, okay, this is the story we want to tell. This is the story we want to tell. And this is the story we want to tell. Tell the story, then go back and edit accordingly. That's how your, your, your brain needs to be able to think divergently or creative 
and going back and editing is not creative process. Okay. You want to go do the content, then come back later and do that. All right. So, so far we've talked about how to start your webinar, how to make your case, and then how to go through and story arc from where they're at today to where we want them to be, which is eventually is to pitch our stuff. But we don't actually go straight into the pitch. We left out one incredibly important step. It's very small. It takes about one minute. But if you don't do it, this will not work for you at all. All right. Uh, can you go back to the checklist slide? Uh, Sandra, this will be on a replay. I'll make sure that you guys get these slides too. All right. What is that? What is that thing? It's a transition. Okay. When you go from the content to the pitch, you have to be deliberate about what you're doing because what you're doing is you're going to basically go from the part where you're helping them and teaching them, which telling a story that is teaching them. That is, you are revealing the secrets. So some people are like, well, the content is just selling them. No, it's not. It's telling a discovery pattern about how you solve those problems. That is real teaching. Okay. But as long as we don't give the tactics away, then they just have the story, the strategy, and the proof. That's all they need. Okay. So when we go through the content and we're going into the pitch, there's a moment in time to where your own psychology is like, oh crap, the pitch is coming up. I have to sell. I have to sell these people. And you freak out. <laughs> Quite frankly, you freak out. So the transition is the tool that you're going to use to remove the sale from your own psychology and from the conversation. Okay. So here's how you do it. <clears throat> and you'll see this, you'll identify this immediately when you see it on the replay. So you start out by saying, has this been valuable so far? You guys actually grab the chat right now. Has this been valuable so far? Have you learned something about how webinars work and how everything is supposed to tie together? Keith says, yes. Renee says, yes. Chip says, yes. Okay. Listen, I know that for the last, what has been 37 minutes, a lot of this is new information. So many of you feel overwhelmed. So here's what I've done. I've put together something special, but I don't want to go <clears throat> and just start pitching you. I've got something special that can help you apply this and uh, start doing this today in your business, but I don't want to just jump into it. Would you guys like to see what I have for you? The special offer I created today. Again, I can answer questions, but if you don't want to see that, let me know. Yes, woo, woo, yes, please. Boom. Okay, that's the transition. Okay, that's the transition. And people are going to say yes. Now, by the way, if they if if it's a little bit, yeah, show me, yes, that's what you're going to get. Okay. If in the transition, if they don't respond, which that has happened to me a total of one time, and it ended up happening, here's what you do. You say, Listen, if you guys don't want to see the offer, that's totally fine. I'm here for you. We can end the webinar now. You just let me know. Do you want to see that? And then people are going to be like, oh, no, no, no. We want to see it. They were just scared to be the first ones to say it. All right. The transition, when you see in the replay, I understand that the exact script that I went through is what you need to do. You need to memorize that part because what you don't want is excitement through the content and then blah through the pitch. You want the excitement through the content and then whoa, through the pitch. Okay. You want your, if you look at your sound file, your actual audio file, you want that to be bigger than it was in the content. Got it. Got it. Perfect. All right. So once we've asked for permission, we can go ahead and pitch, right? We can do the leaky bucket. Now, most webinars call this the stack. Okay. Effectively, what we're doing is in an offer stack is we are deconstructing their problem one by one. Okay. And then we create a bundle solution so they can see the total package value. So you can't just think, well, people are going to know what the value is. No, 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 no. This is new information. They've, they're distracted. There's a lot of things going on. Today, there's so much competition. You have to deconstruct it and decompile it one by one. For me, I like to call this a leaky bucket, okay? 
I like to call it a leaky bucket because visually I'm thinking, okay, well, if I'm working with real estate people, okay, and I want to sell them something, I'm going to hold up that bucket and I'm going to look at the bucket and I start pouring water in it. I'm going to say, what are the holes? What is it that they think in their head that without this thing, I won't be able to move forward with it. Now there's so many people. I think honestly, I think people try and overcomplicate um, things because they want it to come off as their own. I didn't create this, right? I'm just telling you guys what it is. Like people are like, well, it's the it's the the things that they don't believe about themselves. It's the thing they don't believe about their the like uh, the outside forces that are uh, you know conspiring against them, dude. Don't overcomplicate it. Just talk to them. And after you do demo calls and you talk to them, they're going to tell you what those problems are, which by the way, if you guys have seen, um, if you've not gone through lead gen, you, where I do the genie question. So the magical genie question, the reason I do the magical genie question is because I want to know where the holes are. If they tell me in a perfect world, I would like you to do this then that tells me that those holes are there. They need to be plugged. Um, if you haven't seen the demo where I talk about the, um, the genie question, definitely go to Lee Gen Yu. Definitely go through the demo stack because the genie demo, uh, demo pitch is gold. Um, but here it is. What I do in a demo and what you should do before you prepare a webinar is I say, Sam, just imagine that I'm a genie in a bottle. And when you rub my bald little head, I'm going to come out and provide for you. I'm going to grant your marketing wish. What would you want me to grant you? And they're going to say, I want leads to actually respond to me. I want to not have to chase them. I want to blah, blah. And they're going to tell you all that stuff. You're going to list that down. You're going to deconstruct it. And one by one, when you go through this leaky bucket analysis, you're going to go through and you're going to solve those problems. My problems in my age and in my niche are they're probably similar for yours. Um, the leaky holes are one lead quality sucks. Well, you fix that with the qualified lead formula problem solution. Okay. Leads don't show. Well, add in a pre call, uh, a pre call screening, just the way Dr. Peavy did boom problem solution. Agencies are unreliable or expensive or fill that, you know, whatever. Demonstration, you can do that yourself with just three clicks. Problem, solution. I go through everything, I deconstruct it, and by the time I'm done, I end up with a stack. Okay, my stack on my webinar looks like this. Full access to the big three library. Okay, three-click ad launch tool, no agency required. Full access to a proven ad library. Notice... That here, I said full access to the big three library, but then I said full access to the proven ad library. Those are the same thing, but I deconstruct them because the big three library are my core offers. And then my other niches are the niches that are, are the templates I have that will help them if they're doing things that are not my core three. I wanted to address both of those people. Okay. Okay, chasing people, booking bot plus automation. And in that, we talk about, hey, we, we took the PV process, installed that into our automation. And then VIP onboard and, onboard and three-step practice automation. You know, you're giving names to these many products. You're giving them names. That way, when people see them, they're like, oh, yeah, awesome. Everything, every single item, line item in that thing solves a problem. Together, they create a total solution. Does that make sense? When you talk about an offer stack, I feel like people so overcomplicate this. Grab the chat. Let me know if that makes sense. Is it complicated now to anyone? Like, are we still not getting it? Let me know. Yes, it makes sense. Yes, got it. Got it. Got it. Yes, this is great. Okay, great. Awesome. Is there anybody? Okay, sweet. Then we finish. So again, if we have the checklist at the end, here are, so just, Think of the, the journey of the person that's going through this experience. You started them off by making your case, and then you took them through a movie. They, you took them through a story, problem, discovery, solution. Now offer everything. Everything is telling them, yeah, yeah, we got to do this. But in the back of their mind, there's a couple of things that's just telling them, oh, 
I'm too busy. Oh, is it worth the money? Uh, whatever that is, these are the three things we have to inject at the end of the webinar in order to make sure that we put it that much closer to the hole. Okay, sometimes we're going to hold it out. Sometimes we're just going to get really close. One, urgency. Okay, guys, thanks for coming. We have 15 minutes. Let me ask your answer your questions. This offer is, oh, and you have like a fast action bonus. Listen, for the first 10 people that do this, here's what we're going to do. We're going to meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. We're actually going to set up a marketing plan and a this for the rest of you, like whatever it is. Like you want to say for the first fast action bonus, First thing, scarcity. There's only 10 people that are going to get it. Risk reversal. By the way, if you ain't happy, I ain't happy. I'll give you your money back. Right? These are the things that must be at the end of your webinar for you to really, uh, you know, make this happen. All right. Now, when you get done and you go through these slides, I'll provide these slides as well uh, in, um, in lead gen you, so you can, you know, have them for yourself and review them. You can have the checklist. In fact, if anybody wants to take the checklist, make it into something pretty, like an infographic, send it to me. That would be awesome. Um, but here's the post webinar checklist. Now I want you guys to think for yourselves, be as, be as objective as you can be on a scale from one to 10. How well did you do the following things? How much trust and credibility was established? Did you have credentials? Did you borrow credibility from other people? Did you show proof? What, whatever it was, right? How much credibility can you improve that or can you increase that more? To what degree do prospects identify with the stories? How well do those stories tell the story of your prospect? The closer you are, like my story about Dr. Ray Peavy, that is such a like such an identifying identifiable story that people who hear it, they're like, got it solves it. And it, it infers so much information too. All right. Uh, how well did you engage the audience? Did you keep them engaged? Like I'm doing here, ask them for engagement, you know, that trial closes and having people like respond is so important right now on this webinar. Now this is not a webinar where I'm teaching or where I'm selling you anything, but we have more people on the webinar right now than when we started. We have retained, we got up to looks like about 80. We have retained right around 80 during the entire thing. That's because we're engaging, we're teaching new information. You have to do that in your webinar. If it's boring, if you don't engage people, it ain't going to work. So on a scale from one to 10, how well did you do you guys on a scale from one to 10? How well did I do at retaining your attention, making you engaged in this presentation? Renee says 10. Kyle says nine. Steve says 15, 10. Uh, Kyle or Kyle, let me know what I can do to get that to a 10, buddy. All right. That's what you got to do. You got to make sure that you engage them, keep them involved in what you're doing. Because what we're doing is having a story together right now. Many of you are going to leave today and you're going to con tell a story about how you learned a webinar and this experience right now will be part of that, right? That's what we're doing. Okay. Did you back up claims with proof? This is such a big one. I know that before it was on the checklist, you make a claim proof, but um, Sam ovens did a, uh, a webinar not long ago, maybe a year, year and a half ago. And it was kind of like a VSL webinar. Maybe it was 20, 30 minutes. And I was watching his video and every time he would say something, he would have, yeah, these people over here did it. These people over here did it. And then he'd say something, see, look, John, he's really happy. And every time he would make a claim, he would layer in these, uh, these testimonies. I'm like, this is really interesting how he's doing this because he has so many testimonials sprinkled out. And I think a lot of times you guys or people who are newer to VSLs and newer to uh, webinars, they're like, well, when do I put in a, a testimonial? I don't, I don't, I don't know when. It's like, if you make a claim, back it up right then. If you're telling a story, you don't got to do that. But once you're done, back it up. Got it. All right. People buy on emotion, but they justify their purchase with logic. That means that, and that should be another 
another thing on our checklist for persuasion is your, the emotion is going to come from your stories. Okay. But the logic are the formulas, the lessons that you pull out of those stories. So if I tell you a story about this doctor who created this amazing thing, right. And, and or had this rather this amazing, um, outcome, this amazing result, it doesn't mean very much. If at the very end of it, I don't say that's why we do this protocol, this, that, the other, right. I got to back it up. So for, uh, and I'll give you an example of the logic and emotion, the emotion of our case study. Hey, this is what we learned. Our case study. We had a uh, published case study by Facebook. That's amazing. That proves that we're amazing. But like, this is all the story. Right. And then when I get done, the logic is, listen, if we exclude the, if we exclude all of the masses, if we focus on specific people, by default, we are going to get people who are qualified. Does that make sense? Logic. Does that make sense, you guys? That is the extent of the webinar. So what do we do from here? I told you guys that at the end of this webinar, I was going to have um, something special for you. That was not a part uh, of the webinar where I was just doing a role play. Um, I do have something special for you. And I, I think it's going to be kind of cool. But before we get to that, uh, I want to just do a quick little like delineation between that's how you do a webinar. You can go lead gen you and you can see my webinar. And then you can see the slides and be able to pair these things up and start sketching out your own. But before we do that, what questions, if any, do you have? Can I get a recording of this? I missed the first half. Yes, Ronnie, we can do that. Okay, you rock. Thanks. This is awesome. I got a bunch of 10, 10, 10s. Awesome. What questions do you have? And I know that we're not on the, uh, you know, you guys can't come on an audio, so there's going to be a little bit of a lag. How do you get people to the webinar? That's great. You guys keep keep uh, your questions coming in. Um, and But I'll start with Sandra's question about how do you get people to a webinar? So um, unique problem, unique promise, a webinar page. And if you look at, there's two example webinar pages, you can Google this, um, Russell Brunson's webinar registration page. His, his thing is like my weird funnel that makes me $17,000 per day. And that you can copy in one hour, right? That's unique. So benefit plus curiosity that makes you interested. That's pretty unique. Sam ovens. That's the other one you want to Google. It's basically one headline and then max three bullet points. Okay. When you're doing a registration page, you just want to make sure that your offer, that what you're representing, the unique promise you're making is bold enough and unique enough that it speaks to that person. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to put a bunch of like copy down there. You don't want to put a Q and a section. You don't want to like put paragraphs of information. You, if it doesn't work with the hook, with, with the headline and then three bullet points, you need to fix it until it does. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, a bunch of questions came in uh, and then you can run ads to it. By the way, if you want to hack to doing webinars, the easiest way to doing webinars is to do affiliate webinars. You borrow the credibility of the audience of the person that you're working with, and then you just have them promote it for you. What if you don't have any legit proof of past clients or you're just starting out? That's why you don't start with a webinar. You want to graduate to a webinar over time. There's a couple of reasons. One, you don't have proof. Two, you don't really know what their leaky bucket looks like. You don't know the stories. So the best thing to do is to start out with uh, demo calls to ask the genie question. We cover that in Lee Gen Yu, uh, in the genie uh, section of the demo. The more demos you do, which by the way, in, um, in Lee Gen Yu, I also give you a pitch deck for that. Just like I'm giving you the slides for the webinar, I give you the slides for a pitch deck. And you'll notice that they're the same framework. One is just truncated because, because we're going to be talking to them face-to-face, -face, we can resolve their concerns uh, instead of having to go through all this crazy stuff. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, are you generating all the leads just through Upex uh, with my agency? I'm not sure what the question is there, Cosman. Uh, the leads, the, the actual value proposition that we... 
a pitch in that webinar relies on UPEX. What happens if people don't show up or low turnout? That's actually a, so here's the benchmarks. Um, people are not going to show up. That's, I mean, a lot more. So we have whatever 80 people on this. I think we had 300 or no, 270. I can't remember register for it. People are not going to show up. So here are the numbers that you want to aim for. Okay. You want a 20 to 25% show up rate. Okay. And then on replay, you want a 20 to 25% view rate. If you're below, if you're below 10%, you got a problem. If you're like 15, 16%, you know, that might be a one-off, but overall you want to be above 20%. So that's, that's, a, so it's, I guess to answer your question, people are not going to show up. That's just never going to happen. And even if you have like the most, I don't know why, I don't know why, even if you have the most amazing offer ever, you're giving away bricks of gold, only 20% of the people are going to show up. Okay. Uh, Kyle Campbell, what if you don't have testimonies or results yet? Um, when you first start your agency in exchange for you, you can get compensation in a, in a bunch of ways. One, your first five clients, instead of getting compensated, say, Hey, just give me a testimonial, right? That is, uh, worth its weight in gold. What's the link to lead gen you, um, let me paste that here in just a minute, but if you're in our Facebook group, it's pinned to the top. If you're inside the UPEX portal, which is app.upex.com, it's on the left side, left hand side menu. Found this really informative. Please email the recording. This is gold. The recording, this recording will be available in Lead Gen U. Okay. And actually, I'll probably make it available on YouTube. How did you get so good at telling stories? I'm noticing myself getting better over time, but any resources that boosted it? I think I just did it a lot. Oh, Mandy Hunt. Mandy Man, Mandy pasted the the link for Lee Gen U chip. Thank you, Mandy. Um, I think some of us are more natural at it than others. But when you're talking about telling stories, think of like what a comedian does, right? The whole idea that a comedian is doing is coming up with a bit or a story and then refining it over time. So you don't have to hit it out of the park the first time. You can iterate and improve it. But in terms of storytelling, uh, the Heroes 2 Journey is a really good um, resource for how to tell stories. That's good. And then just doing it, I guess. Uh, let's see here. What's the follow-up nurture sequence look like for a webinar? Um, usually we do the webinars on a Thursday, and then we make the deadline on a Sunday. We try and have five emails in there. And you'll notice that you'll get about, you know, if you get 20% people on the webinar and then you convert 20% of your call to action. So if it's a demo, if it's whatever it is, you'll convert 20%. You do the same thing on the replay, but you do it like on the last day usually. Uh, and then we, I think we sent five emails. Uh, okay. Say you are walking into brick and mortar cold. What is your opening one-liner to get them um, to, to a demo? All right. So Christine, if I'm going into a, uh, if I'm going into a business cold, what I do is I go in, Hey, uh, Hey, Christine, I know you're busy. I'm actually really busy. What I have is I checked out your website. I wanted to see if you had time later this week so I could show you how we can get you more boom whatever your offer is. Okay. So I'll deconstruct that. Hey, I know you're busy. I'm busy. That means like in this moment right now, I'm going to leave, but I just need your attention for a second. And then I checked out your website. That means I looked into you. I looked at your business, like show interest in them. I think I can show you how to get more blah and do it without blah. We've got a new system that's doing something we're using with other docs in your or other, whatever in your area. Could I schedule a time to come back? Something like that. How much of your audience is derived from organic? Over time, you want that to be the bulk. Now in marketing, we're always, so here's the beauty of a webinar. If you do a webinar and you get a registration, okay, with the right hook, it almost serves like a list builder as well. Cause you think, okay, well, if I do, if I get hundred registrations, that means I'm gonna get 20 people showing up live. I'll get another 20 people watching it, but that's 60 people that never see it. Well, those 60 people are on your list. So the next time you promote the webinar, do ads plus 
to the people who didn't sign up. And so over time, you want to just build and build and build on that. And you want to, you want to have a longer vision, like a longer vantage point when you're doing these, because if you're, and this is why a webinar is the, is not the first thing you do, like you build into it, right? Um, that way you can have the staying power. All right. Um, this is awesome. Thank you, Russell. Well, an example for this webinar, I got stuck signing up a new client and I ran over, uh, over. So I missed the first half. Yeah, Ronnie, we got a replay. Is there a conversion weight we should shoot for? Yes. Um, 20%. That's what we want. Okay. And, uh, by the way, I've done, I've done webinar demos for agencies. I've done them through, uh, to a two week free trial and I've done them to a demo. Both work. I think demo is better because it gets you better people. It gives your um, sales team an opportunity to qualify people. Excuse me. I got some stuff going on with my ears here. Uh, I have a demo in four minutes. So got a jet. Good luck, Mark. Okay. Best practice for SAS configuration setting, uh, setting setup involving UPEX pricing structure specifically. Uh, everything's going to depend on your niche. I mean, if I'm working with dance studios, they make less money than if I'm working with plastic surgeons, right? So you want to actually focus more on the outcome that you're able to produce for people. And uh, we have a new model that we're going to be doing here in our own agency that I'm really excited about. Something I talked about for a long time, but uh, didn't really do. So, okay. For you, what's been the most effective means or combination of methods to generate your webinar audiences, affiliate webinars by far. Find thought leaders, say, hey, I'll pay you this with conversions, whatever it is, by far, and then ads. Uh, Dave Chappelle is a great storyteller. This was great. Uh, the tall lady with the iceberg, the persuasion of metaphor. Oh, okay. So a man has some uh, recommendations for storytelling, the power of metaphor to sell. Yes. Persuade and explain anything to anyone. Uh, awesome. All right. Hope all is well. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to end the webinar here. Um, what I've done is after Alex Hormozzi's webinar, I was incredibly impressed. And what I did was his, his webinar was probably one of the best webinars I've ever seen in my life. And so what I did was I reached out to a VA and I said, Hey, I want you to recreate the Hormozzi webinar. Okay. And not because I'm going to sell it or anything like that, but because one of the things that I want to do that I think is a value proposition is I want to walk you through a very similar process of this, of what he did and show you how he used webinars to promote his ideas. He had things in there, like kind of like metaphors. He did those a ton. He did the uh, problem discovery solution. He did that. He did the stack. He did everything. So what I'm going to do is when she gets done, and actually she's doing it in Canva, and I'm ending up with so many slides. I'm going to have to send this back out and have it done in uh, Keynote. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide all of those slides for free as well. So you can model Russell Brunson's, mine, and Alex Hermosi's. That's going to be available in Lead Gen U. But you have to take Lead Gen U to get it.